Nick Roush here. Happy to be joined today by a pair of Kentucky Wildcats, a pair of roommates, Luke Fortner and Max Duffy, the biggest boot this side of the Mississippi. Uh, Max just got back from the Senior Bowl. How, how was it? How was Mobile? Hey, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, it was good. It was uh, it was nice down there. Weather was a little bit warmer than Lexington, which is always a positive. Um, and it was good fun. It was a good experience. Obviously, had my buddy Drake Jackson there with me. Um, and it was cool. We had a really good time. And obviously, a little bit different probably to previous senior bowls with all the COVID restrictions, et cetera. But um, yeah, really awesome. I think Drake really enjoyed his time. I think he went really well. So um, it was good. How much has he talked about it, Luke? Has he been real obnoxious or just average amount of obnoxious? Oh, <laughs> he's got to read it. Um, well, <laughs> we made him talk about it a lot because he brought home the whole box of Reese's with him. Um, oh, wow. He hasn't talked about it too much, honestly. Uh, I heard from Drake he did a lot of complaining, though. So that seems very uh, par on par for Max Duffy. Uh, but no, he's been pretty good about it. He hasn't been too uh, too cocky about it. So did they actually just give you like a thing of Reese's peanut butter cups or is it just like Reese's swag? Are you basically a, a, a spokesman for Reese's now? Is that how it works? Um, well, my two O-line housemates should be the spokesmen for Reese's because they fit the mold better. Um, but uh, they gave us pretty much just a massive box of all these Reese's types um, and my housemate Mason um put his hand up to make sure he taste test all of them and see which one he liked the best and i think luke's luke's dived in there a few times too so uh that was pretty cool they gave us a big box of that stuff and uh yeah there wasn't any shortage on reese's at the actual bowl as well at, at, all around the hotel and stuff they were everywhere so i think i put on about 10 pounds well that's good for the scale you know you want to want to be you know, gains right yeah well bulk I mean, season maybe i just yeah i'd prefer it to be muscle not gut uh, did they, what, what, what's the, so what is the best Reese's? I know there's a lot of Reese's products out there. Um, I mean, obviously the peanut butter cups, just the regular ones, those are what, some of the best of the best, but is there any other products that, that really jump out above the rest? I'm not really a big, big fan of Reese's to begin with. Sorry to Reese's if you're listening. Um, wow. I'm not a big fan of Americans wanting to put peanut butter in everything to try and make it better. I don't get how that makes things better. Um, but I like the one, the Reese's, that's probably the least Reese of all of them. It's just like the pretzels are in there and then there's like nuts in there. And like, it's kind of a mixture of stuff rather than just the peanut butter and chocolate. I don't know if that's an unpopular opinion. <laughs> I'm a fan of those, the Reese's pieces, the little ones, mm -hmm. like kind of like M&Ms, but the Reese's pieces are, are my favorite for sure. Literally any of them, actually. <laughs> I don't know well, why I'm like pretending it's just one of them. That's fair. That's fair. I think the ones he's talking about are the whatchamacallits maybe, but I know that the, or maybe a take five, I don't know, but I know what you're talking about, Max, with the pretzel inside. Those are good. Um, yeah. So you, 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 we're, we're just going to have to dive right into it because you've talked about um, getting acclimated to, you know, fat American culture before you, you kind of sound like you have a disdain for it, but yet you live with offensive linemen. I, I don't, I mean, yeah, I mean, I've always called it humanitarian aid. So it's like I've moved over here and I've tried to show them the light. Um, whether they've taken my advice or not, that's up to them. I just, I do think it is funny in this country how you guys all seem to be in a race to who can get type 2 diabetes the quickest, uh, particularly in the O-line room. Um, they seem to be in a pretty hot competition there. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, just, it's just weird to me and uh, hopefully I'll never pick it up myself. So... Is the I, I, I've always I wanted this growing up as a kid when I was a Kentucky basketball fan, and I really hated Duke. Just everything about them, uh, just and and I wanted to know how other people thought of Kentucky basketball, but I couldn't have that perspective because I'm this huge Kentucky basketball fan in Kentucky. What what is the perspective of uh, uh, Americans elsewhere? What was it before you got here? <laughs> uh, oh man. I could go on for a while. Um, no, I mean, obviously, like, everyone loves the sport over here. Um, and so, I mean, we love watching the NBA, NFL. Uh, again, another thing that's quite interesting is I never really understood the whole watching people that aren't the best at what they do. Um, that didn't make sense to me with college. Um, but it's kind of made sense since I've come over here. I get it. Like, everyone 
goes to a college normally and so then you have that kind of pride mm -hmm. um, where you went or maybe local area and stuff but I never really understood the watching the people that weren't the best at their sport until now um, but I don't know I mean you guys just call yourself world war champs and I guess uh, world champs of everything even if the sport's only played in America you still think you're world champs so um, yeah I don't know is that a Mike Edwards shot Max <laughs> Did you see what he tweeted? He tweeted that today. He's a world champion. Yeah. I'm not sure how many countries he beat last night. Maybe a couple, but uh, <laughs> he's claiming he's on top of the world. That's pretty wild, though. You got a teammate who's a Super Bowl champion. I mean, he was making tackles awesome. here two years ago, you know? like it. Yeah, it was really cool. It's actually, it was really fun to watch. Uh, we had the Mike Edwards jersey on last night, so we were supporting him all the way. Nice, nice. Well, uh, Luke, when you – aren't getting shade thrown at you by, by your roommate over here. You're actually still playing football. We, I, I wanted to do this, but then you decided it, it was going to be all outgoing seniors. And you're like, no, nah, I'm good. I'm running it back. So what, what, what made you want to run it back? Uh, you know, a lot of people just say stay in college as long as you can. So, and uh, it's free. So that helps. So I said, why not? Um, no, but seriously, I, I love it here. I really do. And, and the new coaching staff, uh, they seem great. Uh, get a chance to learn some new offense and you know like Duffy says I love school and I hopefully get another degree out of it and and uh, come out with three degrees would be awesome we'll see if that if that happens so the engineering degree wasn't enough you needed to get the master's and then an MBA too real, real try hard move hopefully yeah hopefully yeah <laughs> absolutely um so I'm I'm also curious there was a lot of folks who did the uh the graphics the I'm coming back and I really wish that we could find a way to put some music to it so like they could do the uh, I'm coming home and you know like play like the ditty the violin and all that you did not do any graphic whatsoever you let Kennard announce it when he announced it so what why uh you know Darian loves that drama he loves that uh he knows it he uh and we were texting and I was like, Hey, you, you got to let me know if you're coming back before you let everyone else know. Right. And he was like, uh, all right, I'll tell you. So he told me he was coming back. I said, well, while you're at it, just throw my name in there and, and that'll be it. Uh, <laughs> you know, Slacks wanted me to do a graphic and everything. And I was like, I'm, I'm not doing that Slacks. I can't do it. So the graphics lost all credibility when Missouri made Grant McInnes and, <laughs> that he was coming back. and that's never, it didn't make any sense to well, me. What happened because was, Two weeks before I decided to come back, I was making fun of Grant McInnes for posting his graphic. I said, yeah. you're a punter, Grant. Like, you can't put that out there. And and then Slacks was like, you got to put a graphic out. I was like, Slacks, I was just making fun of Grant. I <laughs> yeah. The Missouri one, I think that they made Grant announce it just to let the fans know there'd be one more year of disappointment and then they'd try and improve after that. I think that's what it was. So he just had to say, hey, guys, oh, one more year. That's all you got to put up with. And then I'll promise I'll be out of here. So I need to know more about how you all mess with Grant leading up to the game. Um, Cause I, I think that was a story that, that didn't get enough attention at the time. Uh, the attention it, it rightly deserves. I don't know what you're referring to. I'm being serious. I don't know. Well, Grant, we gave Grant a bunch of crap. Yeah. yeah apparently I did. Yeah. yeah. After the game. Yeah, so uh, the story in one of the St. Louis newspapers, it was something along the lines of you all printed out pictures of his face and put them all over the facility. Oh. <laughs> We're Snapchatting them. Yeah. To him. Well, so Matt Ruffalo did that. It was it was pretty funny. Um, yeah, we we uh, we printed out probably I want to say forty to fifty pictures of him and just put him up over everywhere. Which was actually the funniest part of it was I reckon. 50% of the team knew who Grant was and 50 didn't. <laughs> so people kept asking who was that. That was actually pretty funny. But um, yeah, he got the last laugh, unfortunately. Yeah. That's actually yeah. why I came back, Grant, or Max. I came back so I could beat Grant <laughs> just one more time. He couldn't get the last laugh. I was like, oh, ah, yeah. got to beat Grant. I mean, it did have to be pretty cool to see a guy that you've been friends with since you got here go elsewhere and have some success when, when he finally got a shot. No doubt. Um, I was so happy for Grant when he found out he was going to Missouri and staying in the DC and all that, you know, it's, it's pretty tough to come in and be able to produce straight away. And 
obviously he would even admit he probably didn't have the best first season but i thought after that and when when kind of he did kickoffs and those kind of things he did really solid job and he's, he's a pretty good punter so um, he did a really good job for missouri i thought this year so it's cool to see him out there and get to go play and i'm just happy for him because i know that he, you know he loves football um he loves competing he loves punting so it's really awesome for him to get an opportunity elsewhere and get to compete and they won a lot of games this year which is always great too i mean as much as we want to beat them it's always good to see your friends do really well and um they you know won what seven games this year maybe so it was awesome something like that yeah yeah i i, I don't like their coach though he's he's big time nerd i'm just i'm not a fan of drink wit um <laughs> I, I don't know what it is i just don't well, something rubs me the wrong way it's those app state coaches like they they come in they think they're the, the bee's knees and i just rubs me the wrong way Luke actually applied to be an app state coach <laughs> Yeah, I said nerd on the on the job opening. I said, oh, got to go after it. Uh, so, you you when you brought up Grant, I remember that first season. He he kind of struggled, like like you said, he did struggle. Uh, you come in, start doing the Aussie thing, but I still remember, Grant was probably the first guy that went do in doing this job that I saw like go to a catwalk, and I was like. I mean that guy plays for like he's a baby he's so young because i had always they'd always been my age you know and i mean i was probably 22 or something at the time 23 uh but that was the first time realizing holy crap like i can't imagine that amount of pressure as a high school kid i, I just can't imagine being under that much scrutiny and having the magnifying glass on me at all times M max when you like did having that experience playing in big stadiums and stuff, were you just, was this another kind of, I wouldn't say walk in the park, but the, it didn't, I'm sure it wasn't an enormous adjustment. I, the bigger adjustment is probably moving, you know, 3000 miles away from where you grew up. Um, yeah. I mean, it definitely helped that I probably, probably more so like when I think about it, it probably helped more so that I'd just been a professional athlete for three years um, learning, like I kind of training standards and like, how to just go about everyday life with while trying to handle sport at the same time and not getting carried away too much with the success or the other things that come along with it, I guess. Um, but playing in front of the stadium, I don't know. I've always kind of, I guess Luke would probably be saying, like, once you get out there, you don't even know people. Like when people always ask, like, what's it like to play in front of 100,000 people? It's like, well, it's really cool, especially for me, because I get the best seats in the house. I just get to sit there and watch the crowd most of the time. And enjoy it i don't have to think about it too much but once you get out there like you genuinely forget that you're doing it like you're so focused on what you're doing so um i'm not sure it helped so much in games but maybe just the week to week stuff mm -hmm. um definitely helps so well and i i'm curious because i i, I wanted to bring this up in the senior bowl uh, this is just a statement but you look weird punning without running beforehand <laughs> I'm just so – it's in my brain to watch you run left or run right and then think like, oh, is he going to kick it? Or, oh, he might run, even though you're probably not going to run. There's still that thought that it could happen that just, like, gets you on your toes a little bit. Watching you punt at the senior ball, is, are you – do you have to change anything about what you do to kick that style regularly? It's definitely not as fun, is it? No, um, no. It's very absolutely. boring. Um, <laughs> so, no, I mean, I've – we – we did a fair few spirals, I think, in my first year, and we kind of went down and down with the amount of spirals we did. I think we ended up only doing maybe three this year, um, and that included out of the back of the end zone against Auburn. So, like, that one, you kind of have to spiral because you really only got one step. So, mm -hmm. um, I mean, I've, I've done it for a long time. Um, I'm hopefully doing okay at it. Um, but, yeah, I agree. It's <laughs> definitely not as fun and definitely not as, like, I guess with the scheme and stuff, you can't be as inventive um, at the next level, which is a shame because I really enjoyed Mondays talking to our coaches and working out how we were going to kind of make our punt proactive and kind of a weapon rather than, you know, hey, let's just catch this thing and get rid of it and hope it hope for the best type thing. Luke, I'm curious. I've always heard that punters are people too. Is that is that actually true? No. Okay. I'm Not just... They don't do anything. Um, <laughs> I think there was, there was one time at practice, it was like period three, and Max is sitting off to the side, like under the tent, and he's got ice on his knee. And I'm like, oh, you ice, like, do you ice before you punt? That doesn't make much sense. He's like, oh, I'm done already. 
like I'm I'm leaving soon. I'm like, why are you? Why do you even show up? Ah, oh, must be nice. Walks around, and plays ping pong. That's it. Mm-hmm. Well, oh, so is 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 he any good at ping pong though? That's the question. Probably not. I've never seen it because it's always during practice when everyone else is you know actually doing something. Right. You have right. to ask. Are you good at ping pong? I'm pretty handy. I'm pretty handy. The Australians had a pretty strong hold of the of the table tennis court mm-hmm. uh, and the facility, but um. Yeah, I would say the worst thing about this whole kind of COVID scenario, if I'm allowed to joke about it for one second, would be that uh, we weren't allowed to use the hot tubs this year. So practice, um, when we were done after period one, we couldn't just go jump in the hot tub for the rest of it, which which is a little bit disappointing, especially with how cold it gets in Lexington. So um, kind of just had to try and find other things to do, which involved, unfortunately, just icing my knee the whole time this year and watching Luke and the guys run around and hit each other. Well... I, you brought up the COVID stuff. Uh, I, I enjoyed that you all did at least make light of some of it early on. You all did the the little uh, Max and Luke COVID show and you just kind of cracked jokes, had fun with it. But Luke, especially from your standpoint where you were going to the Kentucky Children's Hospital once, twice a week, hanging out with those kids. I'm sure the, the, the senior year you envisioned uh, or initially was, I mean, I wouldn't say complete opposite, but it had to take so much of the fun out of it. Yeah, it did. And especially, uh, you know, the no fans and, you know, we don't get to go to children's hospital every week. And just a lot of things that come with uh, kind of capping it all off with your senior year. Uh, just had a, you know, they're just different. That's all it was. Uh, mm-hmm. We got to do some virtual uh, children's hospital visits and, you know, we tried to make the best of it. And we realized that, Max and I probably have, uh, you know, better end of the deal. Um, you know, no one we know was affected too badly by COVID. So uh, we're thankful and, and we're glad we made the best of it. And, you know, that's why I got a, another year to uh, right, right. try and get some fans back in the stadium. You know? Well, and, and we've seen it with the basketball team. It, it feels like the, the lack of fans and, keeping it together it just it just feels like you all did a really good job of despite the very difficult circumstances you were under you were able to keep trudging along keep everything open throughout the entire process just whoa i mean how do you think that was successful that you all were able to not only you know pretty much avoid the big outbreaks but also trudge through those difficult times and just keep pounding away uh, I'd definitely say um, our athletic training staff, Gabe and Jim Maddalino, uh, they did a really great job and they truly care about us. They really do. And Coach Stoops, just the whole attitude he had, uh, every week he'd repeat it. Max Max would love when he'd say it. Uh, you know, these are different times. And, and part of it, I think, is accepting that they're different. But um, you, know, you can't feel sorry for yourself. You can't be like, oh, well, COVID caused this or COVID caused that. And uh, we treated it just like a normal year and, and took the precautions we had to. Uh, but definitely our administration and our coaching staff really helped. Yeah, and I uh, am not like a master of uh, how the, you know, I'm not in the locker room. Uh, I, even if there wasn't COVID, you all wouldn't let me there with a 10-foot pole. But I get the sense that like Mark Stoops really has created a, a culture where uh, things are the way that he says they are. And it, it's just, a, it's a vibe. I, I, I don't really know how to adequately put that, but there is the the whole blue collar workman mentality. It, it can sound sometimes like some coaching cliche stuff, but I do think it actually does resonate with how the players are, approach it on a, on a daily basis. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I mean, very few opt outs, you know, very few, um, excuses were made all year and Mm -hmm. it truly is a reflection of coach Stoops and what he's done and uh he says it all the time you know I don't have many rules and he really doesn't he does he's not huge on on making guys follow you know a list of 100 different rules uh it's just a general you know take care of your business do everything Mm -hmm. the right way and I think he's gotten to the point in this program where he doesn't have to you know lay it all out he's got guys that can that can help him with that and uh you know I think he's, he's done a really good job for sure. Now I don't uh, want to get too heavy for too long because we're, we're here to have fun, but uh, you know, you can't think about the season without thinking about Chris Oates and, and coach Sharman. And 
I ju- just thinking about uh, the salute you all gave him uh, in that Vandy game, like hell, I just get choked up thinking about it. That was not only just an amazing gesture, but nobody saw it coming. And I- I'm curious, just your point of view, how things unfolded. Um, and to, I mean, you hell, you were hurt for it. So I don't know if you could just kind of walk us through how you all thought of that and and how it kind of played out because that was that was an amazing salute. Yeah, we were glad we got to do something like that. And and Vandy was was first class about it. I mean, they were they were awesome. Um, and it's kind of funny because I just know that he would have been upset if, that we did that. <laughs> He'd have been like, "What are you guys doing? Like, you know, why are you guys taking a penalty? Uh, and that's a bunch of BS. You should go out in there and, and just kick their butts." Uh, so. Uh, knowing he'd kind of laugh about it and that sort of thing, it, it it makes you smile and brings a tear to your eye all at the same time. But we were glad we could do it, and he left a, an incredible legacy that we're going to continue to honor. And um, you know, we just we just uh, we loved him a lot, and we're we're glad for what he could do for us for the time he was here. It was also just on that as well. It was also great. I think it was the Georgia game. Um, Luke, you can correct me if I was wrong. We had Chris in the locker room. Um, which was awesome for all the guys to be able to see him. Um, obviously, it's tragedy what what's happened to him, and hopefully he's you know he's, I saw he was standing up the other day, so mm-hmm. slowly making his way back, and we're hoping one day he'll be able to run out in the field again. But um, I guess for all the guys, on top of some things that you know COVID and things like that, we had a lot of things happen off the field um, that were pretty personal for a lot of the guys. So um, it was a pretty tough year um, fighting through all that kind of stuff, but. I think, you know, with every kind of negative, the guys are, able, you know, you're able to find positive. And I think the guys really get a great appreciation for how lucky we are, um, not only to be healthy, but also to, you know, be able to be talented in some way that we're able to perform in front of hundreds of thousands of people. So, um, and how quickly it could be taken away. So it's awesome to, you know, um, be able to do that. And we're so lucky to be able to do that. And I think, you know, Luke and the O-line guys and the rest of the team did a great job in, kind of showing their appreciation for how lucky they are by, you know, performing day in, day out during this, during the COVID stuff and um, really showing that we, you know, appreciate these guys by making sure we put in our effort and, and showing how much uh, we appreciate the opportunity that we're given. Well, and I think it speaks to kind of this, the resiliency of the team that despite all of the bad, it ended with an incredible high with a win in the Gator Bowl, which, uh, that was a lot of fun, uh, and uh, you got the sense going into it, too, that everybody did kind of unbutton their shirt a little bit, relax um, after a long season. Uh, but to add to that, it was also just a nice nice beatdown um, with, with highlights all around from both sides. I, I know, uh, Max, you were, acting, you, you were acting like it wasn't a big deal, but you know everybody lost their minds on that damn punt, right? Like... <laughs> Just like one little skirt and, and the entire Big Blue Nation just melted down. Yeah, which is pretty funny. I don't know. I, I've been thinking about, like, I wouldn't never wanted to do it, but I always thought about it a little bit of like, I bet you I could sell a little bit of candy to one of these guys and they'll buy everything. So, um, Chris, I was actually talking to Chris Rodriguez about it literally in the lead up to the ball game because I was telling him I should be playing running back because um, I could step people just as good as he can. And he was like, no, you can't. And I was like, yeah, I can, man. And I was, I was like, in our game, what do you think we have to do? And I was showing him how to put the ball out there and make him think that I'm going to kick it and then go around him. And he's like, yeah, but that would never work because I'll just tackle you in our game. And then after the game, I was like, oh, it would never work, huh? So that was that was pretty funny. We were kind of laughing about that after the game. But um, that was cool. Like, I was, like you said, I, at the time, I was more worried about the fact that we'd almost had a punt blocked and, to be honest, I wasn't happy with how far I kicked it. So I was kind of running off, shaking my head. And and then I kind of, when I watched it again, I thought it, I thought it was pretty cool. Well, and then Chris, Chris hasn't, I mean, I mean, when doesn't that dude have a big game? But Luke, I'm curious when you're, uh, I mean, especially after that pick when he just, it was like first play touchdown, can you feel that coming? Or is it something that happens in the play? Like when do you realize like, oh, he's gone? Well, the problem is he's kind of slow. Like, you know, he's a bruiser. He really is. And he breaks a ton of tackles. And I love him to death. But (laughs) it's kind of like Benny. Like, Benny would make some serious plays. But those long touchdowns were just hard to come by because he was just slower than those guys. But uh, I don't know. It's it's just awesome 
because you know, you know, even if everything isn't quite perfect up front, that every single play has a chance. Mm-hmm. That's true for all of them too. Uh, I'm really excited about watching the, the younger guys this year because I think it's going to be really great. They're going to have, you know, Smoke and Chris to learn from. Um, and the running back group has, has been a, a position we haven't struggled with lately, and I don't think we're going to start either. So, How, How's your job going to change day to day? I know we hear – uh, a lot of the the buzzwords like not as much inside zone outside zone pin and pull uh pin and pull which by the way you just sound like a smart football guy if you say that <laughs> so I, I love it but it's really just it's like the from my understanding it's basically the belly play that we learned in like middle school football where guy blocks down guy pulls outside lead blocker but is that's going to be kind of fun because you're, you're probably going to get to do a little bit more than what you were asked of uh previously yeah, you're de- we're definitely going to do some more stuff than we did last year and get to get to try some different concepts out. And uh, I think when Stoops was telling me about Coach Wolford, he was uh, he was talking about we we're playing South Carolina. And he's like, I looked over that sideline and he was running running on us for 300 some yards and he's just laughing at me. Uh, so so that's just shows you the kind of relationship they have and and how good of an offensive line coach he is. And uh, with Coach Cohen coming and. I mean, it's going to be a lot of fun. We're definitely going to switch it up a little bit, get to learn some new things, uh, see what we're good at, see what we're not. You know, we took pin pole out of our original playbook uh, with Coach Grand when Drake was the center. I don't know if you knew because, oh. I mean, you couldn't get him out there in space. He just, <laughs> it wasn't going to end well. So, because we had it in when Toth was the center. And, you know, obviously Coach Grand came after that and they let Bunchy do it. But, Drake got to that center position and they, they suddenly took it out. So I don't know. I couldn't tell you why, but you'll have to ask him about it. He's not because when he used to turn side on to try and start that run, he gets stuck in between the guards. He's gut. I thought <laughs> that was it. Also, Luke, are you, are you sure after our success in the bowl game that maybe we'll run to the right at some stage next year? Or do you think we'll just stick to all the left run plays? <laughs> uh, hey, shout out to Coach Merrill for doing this. <laughs> No, he seriously did. He really did. I, I can't imagine uh, taking over that responsibility. And I truly think Coach Mayer was just one step ahead of everybody else because uh, they just thought we were going to have to run to the right, and then we just didn't. We never did. So it was a great job by by all the coaching staff kind of coming together oh. and finishing. Uh, I, I'm also curious, too, if you got – it sounds like Darian's wanting to try left out. Is that going to be weird to have somebody different? I mean, you'd have two new guys sandwiched in between there. Yeah, it'll definitely be different. It, um, luckily, we, we kind of – knowing COVID was coming last season, mm-hmm. we did a lot of moving around, putting guys in different places, working with different guys. Uh, you know, if someone got close contact, they're out for two weeks. So, I've worked plenty with, with you know, different combos up there. It'll be fun to see who – who makes the push and, and pulls mm-hmm. out those spots. Um, a lot of talent, a lot of talent for sure. It's going to be fun to watch though. So Max, I, to, to switch gears a little bit, uh, you obviously uh, love a good uh, ribbing with, you know, Jack. I mean, all of the forms of insulting people you will happily do, particularly on social media as well. Are these dudes uh, like, I know, no, there's never been a football coach that's ever read anything, what people write. Uh, they've never, they stay, everybody's off social media, but how much are these guys really on social media? Oh, well, these guys are on it 24 seven, even probably even a half time sometimes, but uh, no, they're, <laughs> no, the guys are good. They're actually good about it. That's the great thing about, I think, Kentucky football as well is we, we don't have too many guys that take themselves too seriously. And if they do, they get brought down pretty fast. So um, it's awesome that we have a really good coach like that. And I think, um, you know, you don't see it. I mean, that, I think you see it a lot of other schools around that, you know, there are those guys that kind of think it's all about them and the world kind of revolves around them. But I don't I don't feel like we have that at Kentucky. I feel like we're a really hum- humble kind of group that's able to poke fun at themselves and, you know, admit when we're doing things bad and then, you know, also say when, we're, when we think we're going really well. And I think, you know, led by the guys on the line first and foremost and then guys like Josh Pascal and that, like we have a pretty humble, humble, quiet kind of group. Um, sometimes... It was funny, we'd be in our leadership groups and, um, you know, we're trying to get these guys to say even more because these guys do have such great things to say. But I think we're all just, I think I felt like last year we're all just such a humble group that everyone kind of, you know, maybe not the the loudest group of all time, but Mm -hmm. um, it's awesome to be a part of. And 
it's good that the guys can kind of have a little bit of a laugh with everything. Well, you have made it a point of contention to frequently point out uh, Luke's hairline. Um, and here's well, the it's thing. Hard, it's hard to point it out. You have to get pretty high up there. Yeah, to be able to, to actually see it. But here's the, here's the thing that you don't understand, Max, is only bald guys can make fun of other bald guys. <laughs> so, like, Luke well, can make fun of my hair. I can make fun of or, or lack of hair. I can make fun of his hairline, but that those are the rules. You got to be in the club to be able to, 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 to make those jokes. Well, as a senior citizen that apparently I am, I feel like the fact that my hair is still remaining on my head, that I'm really allowed to poke fun at whoever I want because, you know, I've been through a lot of things over the years. And, you know, back in my day um, when, when college football was real football, um, you know, we all have hair, but apparently not, not anymore. See, uh, Luke, did you know, well, you know why he still has all his hair? I know the secret. Really? He doesn't wash it. No. Oh. <laughs> he, he never washes his hair. <laughs> he just gets in the shower, lets it run some water over it. It's, it's, that's all he does his whole life. Well, and at least right now, Luke, you've got a good thing going. Like, it, it's nice and, and fluffy. But I think where you can run into some bad visuals is when you take the helmet off and you're real sweaty. And then there's just. Have you heard this story? Well, the spider cam, the spider cam gets him. So we have the pole cam and they, they yeah. sit right behind the line of scrimmage and maybe about 10, 15 yards back. And, you know, the older guys will get up behind the line and, and kind of help the young guys out. And next day you're watching the film and you got like the, the play going on. And right behind the play, you got me standing there with my helmet off. And there's just a massive, just, just polished reflection <laughs> going on there. And, and Drake never – Never hesitated to, to ask coach to pause it and, and take a look. So I learned very early that you stay outside the hash, you know, you keep your helmet off. On. <laughs> so I got it all figured out now, but it was, it was tough. Though, the first start. Uh, well, I, I made it to 25 and it was still probably uh, a little too long before it came home. You'll, you'll know when it's time to come home, you'll know. It'll, it'll just be a feeling and, and it'll, it'll happen one day. Um, and don't feel bad about it either. I haven't paid for a haircut in five years or something. Just every Friday, get out the beard, uh, the beard trimmers and just whoop, gone done like that. I, uh, I just posted that Super Bowl graphic that the media team wanted us to post yesterday. I think Noger, our, our, one of our video guys touched it up a little bit. with some Oh, large, large I, think he, I think he added some there. So <laughs> yeah. I, shout out to him. I appreciate it. It means a lot. Uh, looking out for me there. Oh man. Um, so he gives you crap for your hair. Did you ever like, Hey Max, where were you running in Auburn? Like, come on. <laughs> Uh, I generally say, uh, were we supposed to kick it to Kadarius Tony, or is that an accident? <laughs> that's that's probably my go-to. It used to be um, asking why he was kicking to the hedges in Georgia Ooh. two years ago. Yeah, uh, that, that was that, that was people's favorite for a while. That 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 crushed the average. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, that wasn't a good one. That was. Uh... It was nice for the people and the fans, though, to get to touch the ball and you know, just try and get them involved. I'm always a man of the people, so you know, I just throw the ball out there and, and see if they can, you know, touch a game ball on that. But uh, yeah, that one that one was around for a while. It's hard to make fun of him punting because he always just goes back to, well, if you guys did your job, I wouldn't be punting. Oh man, which he's right, which sucks. Oh, but God. it's hard to make fun of him for punting. Man, that is brutal. It is brutal, and it's also tough when like, oh, you know. You know this Ray Guy Award thing I've got here. Like, I mean, I, I wouldn't play that card very often, but like, it's, it's a card you can play. I mean, best punter well, in football. The, the funniest thing about the Ray Guy is it's probably like the least special Ray Guy trophy ever because it sits in his apartment floor, like <laughs> on the carpet, like no case, no shelf. I imagine every other everybody else's Ray Guy has like some pristine spot and his is just on his disgusting carpet in his room, like next to his dirty shoes and like just clothes. I, I don't know. I just feel like if I want a Ray Guy, I'd take care of it. Obviously, you can't ship it back to you know Australia. It's a little harder, but definitely, definitely I often I, I just leave it there somewhere. I leave it somewhere accessible because I know Luke and Mason walk past the room all the time and just want to come in and take a sneak peek and think, you know, one day maybe I'll win an award, but that's okay. I'll just make sure it's right there for him. So when, when I remember in the Auburn, that, that fake, 
was like you had the green light for it and it was if they gave you all the look you could go did you get the green light for the missouri run that you had and like is there a do things go in slow motion when you're when you're like oh now i get to run is it like the adrenaline i, I just imagine it being like a, a movie scene where everything is like slow motion it's like uh you know th- this is me just dramatizing well, everything um well the missouri year obviously was before the Auburn one so no they didn't I mean, I had never actually said, like, if it's there, run. But it was like an agreement between me and the special teams coaches of, like, hey, Max, if it's there, go. But, like, I'm don't, not sure we ever asked Coach Soups for his opinion on that. Um, (laughs) And Missouri just kind of – I think they just got bored, honestly, with, like, we punted so many – I mean, we scored a lot of points that game, but we also punted, like, nine times or something. And they ran out of looks and they just kept giving us the same one time after time. And I was like, dude, if we just block this properly, I can run. So talk to Boogie. Boogie was my like personal protector. And then I had Justin as well. Just talked to them about it before the play. And I said, hey, look, if it opens up, I'm going to go for it. So just make sure you hold on to your block a little bit. So that was good. And then the Auburn one, I did get the green light, but it was also my fault. I should, I'm supposed to kick the ball if I look like I'm going to get tackled. And I, I probably thought I was running at four, four speed when I was running at five, four speed. So um, unfortunately got tackled and, and got to eat a fair bit of the Auburn grass, which was nice. Um, and then jogged off. And I think Luke gave me a pat on the back and that's about it. Do they, uh, like, do you practice getting tackled in that event? Like, I'm sure that would be something to be, you know, like the, the guys would enjoy doing, you know, practice <laughs> giving you a hit or two every once in a while. Why he was icing his knees that one day. <laughs> oh man. Um jokes aside though, that uh you have won quite a bit of football games. Uh I'm trying to like like Max, when you're thinking back over the last three years, a lot of wins. Is there is there one that jumps out more than the the others? Um Every win's good, honestly. And I don't just say that in like a cliche way, like it's they have all kind of got their own little special moment to them i guess um particularly when it's such a grind uh week in week out to come up with those performances and um generally the wins don't stand out to me because that means i haven't played much and that sucks so um sometimes the losses for me are honestly the better games um from a selfish point of view uh but i don't know i mean i had plenty of favorite games i think the citrus bowl was probably my favorite i mean that's the biggest game we kind of played in um and then I would say, besides that, obviously, being the Louisville stuff doesn't really mean a whole lot to me. I didn't really grow up here. But mm-hmm. I would say the Citrus Bowl. And then and then probably beating Florida and Florida. I wish I – if that was, like, my third year, it would have been so much better because I would have been able to appreciate it um, so much more. It was kind of my second game or third game and kind of just, like, learning football and, oh, we're not supposed to beat these guys. Well, it seemed like we beat them pretty easy type thing, you know what I mean? So, like <laughs> – it was kind of strange to me that that was such a big result, whereas I thought we were pretty good, obviously, that year we won 10 games. So now I've kind of come to appreciate it a bit more with, with some seasons where we probably haven't won as many games as, as we should have. Yeah, and that that entire 18th season, too, was kind of uh, – you, you could see things building and building, but it was just a matter of doing it and getting it done, and that's uh, that's why that, that Missouri game – uh, the second time around was one of my favorites. Even though y'all didn't w- weren't too sharp offensively, Luke, that was still a just like, oh my gosh, is this going to happen? And Lynn did his thing, and it that's kind of Lynn did his thing. Ended up becoming a kind of an mo <laughs> almost for the team there for a while. Whenever Coach Grant came to y'all during that bye week and was like, "All right, this is what we're going to do," did you did you think it was going to work? Uh, I would love to say yes, um, but Coach Sloman did a pretty good job of kind of like, you know, hey, we're just going to do our job and we're going to let the, them figure out the rest. So, uh, I don't know. I'd like to say yes, but probably not. I was probably like, oh, dude, no quarterback. You know, what are we going to do? But it all worked out, I think. I'd say so. Yeah, yeah, I think that's fair. Um, there was like, I don't know, 17 rushing records broken or something. Um uh, I, the the UT Martin game, the Louisville game, I mean, just smashing Louisville in the math too in the rain had to be so damn satisfying. Well, the thing about Lynn is, you know, when he's that wide receiver, 
you could obviously see how athletic he was, but you truly did not get a complete appreciation of it until he was getting his ball every single time. I mean, I was talking about Chris being fun to block for earlier. Lynn was incredible. I mean, you could just flat out not block guys. Like, seriously. I mean, there were probably – there were quite a few plays where we messed up as an offensive line, and Lynn would just make guys look silly, and they'd be like, wow, the offensive line did great that play. And we'd come in the next Monday, and Schlarman would be like, you know, you guys suck. Like, <laughs> you, you know, you didn't play well. You know, but everyone's giving us all this praise. And so, I mean, that's just the type of athlete he was. And, and beating Louisville, oh, it was, it was incredible. In the rain, it was it was a really fun game to be a part of. Yeah, I'm gonna take back. I'm gonna take back my answer and say that the Belk Bowl actually was the most my, my most favorite game by far. Like, just the whole lead up, like the week, like the NASCAR incident where they were all like talking shit to win, and and then like they just couldn't keep their mouth shut before the game either. And you just like if you've been around him, like. Sometimes maybe he's not the most engaged person of all time. So to fire him up and make him like super engaged is the silliest thing you can do. Um, <laughs> it was, the, du- it was the worst possible mistake they could have made. Like, uh, let's piss off their best player. He just tore them apart. And it was like so good to watch from the sideline. And the fact that he threw the winning touchdown is even more like that just topped it all off. Um, but it was it was so awesome. And I've talked to, at the senior ball, I talked to some of those Virginia Tech guys. And I was like, what were you doing? And they're like, man. I wish we had to just shut up. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that would have been probably more wise. He gave him a nice little one, too, too. I mean, it wasn't just uh, like throwing in wild punches. It was a wah, wah, wah. Yeah, I ain't hoping in the ring with Ling anytime soon. I can tell you that. <laughs> it was funny because we had to, they made, the SEC made us wear, you know, shirts this year with our numbers up on it. And, and it was all because of, according to Coach Toots, it was all because of Lynn. Yeah, the Lynn uh, Bowden warm ups, you got to yeah. go out at a certain time for a certain time with your number on it so that if you, you know, throw one, two, that the rest can say, oh, it was number this or that. Oh, wow. So, there you go. I did, man, Lynn Bowden just leaving his fingerprints all over uh, the SEC. Well, man, oh, gosh. Uh, also, the throw that he had to Josh on fourth down where he was running around for like five minutes back there and co- Josh caught it, you know, an inch above – the turf like what a crazy stupid play i mean man that was a fun game a lot of fun that game um so this has been a good talk um but i do i do want to play a a game because we haven't cracked enough jokes today i i want to play the roommate game and it's essentially the newlywed game um which uh, i know you're not familiar with max i don't know what they call it in australia um I wish I had more Australian jokes. Like, is there good? Do you like, Aborigines? Like, what? What? What's? Do you all call them Crocodile Dundee or anything like that? Like, it's very hard to make fun of Australians um, because there's really not a lot to poke at fun at. To be honest, um, obviously intelligent, good-looking, healthy kind of people. So, um, really, like, I can see where you struggle to kind of find those jokes to come up with. But that's fine. The guys, the guys in my house, find the same thing too. So. Yeah, um, Vegemite you know, maybe, sandwich. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Outback Steakhouse. Did you leave your boomerang at home? You know, like, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That old stuff. That's on top of the right guy. <laughs> so, what I want to do is I want to ask you all uh, a, a series of questions, and I'd like for you to write it down, uh, your answers first before we say them out loud, because uh, I you know, you've, you've, you've known each other for quite some time. So I figured we might be able to produce some, some high quality uh, responses. Uh, now the question is, uh, are you, are you all prepared for this? What could potentially be an embarrassing task? No doubt. Okay. All right. Who, who is the most likely to make a mess and not clean it up? Everybody has a roommate that's, oh, well, so-and-so left the, the, the sticky pots and pans out. We reveal at the same time or we reveal? No, I think we reveal at the same time. Okay. Okay, are we ready? Yeah. Let's have at it. <laughs> oh, we've got a, we've got a Mason and a Mac. Ooh, ooh, take that, Max. Uh, easily you, Max. Are you kidding me? <laughs> well, here's the thing, like... We'll get, you know, some to-go food from football or somewhere. And it's in a perfectly good container. 
And Max will, will get a plate out, dirty it up with whatever he's eating. And then the plate will just sit like on the floor for, I mean, possibly weeks. Possibly weeks. Now, in, in his defense, I, I don't, you know, I spend a lot of time in my room. All right. So maybe I don't have the opportunity to dirty it up like he does, but easily well, max. I also I also leave the plate on the 25 unopened uh, Amazon Prime orders from that day. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, generally try to find room amongst all of those. Okay. Well, now that we've cleared that up, that Max is definitely the slob, who would survive the longest stranded on a desert island? Hmm. 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 You'd think the Australian might have a leg up. He grew up on the outback. Is it... Oh, I, I, I can't see who's Luke got. We've got we've got a Mason from Max. Who, Luke, who did you submit? Easily like, myself. Oh, okay, good. So Luke easily for, myself. Uh, I'll give him that. He'll have he'll be able to engineer some sort of raft to get off it. But that's what I'm saying. Do you have to stay on the island? Uh, I mean, not it, Gilligan was stuck on it, but the professor he found a way to help eventually get him off. I think so. Uh, I think that's right up Mason's alley is to create some sort of. Uh, concoction to get off the island well mason mason would sniff out the food pretty easy he'd be able to find the food on the island um any kind of leftovers or anything like that would you be can't pretty, you can't do uh, that to mason when he's not even on the call That's not fair. <laughs> he has no chance to defend himself um but like, i just want like luke would would engineer some sort of craft to get off it which is fine but i hope there there is you know some maybe palm leaves or something around to tie the things together because he definitely can't use his own hair so um, <laughs> I uh I think I'd be better because I think I'm better at being alone than Max. Max is always like, hey, what's he doing tonight? You mm -hmm. know, like butterfly. You watch the game? No, Max, I don't want to watch the game. You know that sort of mm -hmm. thing. So yeah, Luke's actually doing real school. So here's a very important question. <laughs> this is a this is a multiple choice question. Yeah. Who is older, Phil Hoskins, Big Snack, Max, or Old Man Luke? Who's the oldest? Is this by age or like personality? Well, I think I think we know where we're gonna go with this. Who's who's the oldest? <laughs> well, yeah. you go ahead. Mine, mine's back. <laughs> oh, Phil, Max says Phil is the old man. Well, yeah. Phil got hurt in a warm up, so <laughs> I mean, I that might be the oldest thing I've ever heard of. Uh, All right. And then obviously by age, Max has it, but Brez has been calling me the retiree lately. So I guess me, I don't know. And See, Phil, what, Phil had 10 seasons on the team or 11? At least a decade. I don't yeah. know. I think he was, I think he was playing when Vince Young was still a quarterback. Gotcha. At Texas. <laughs> that, that sounds about right. Um, See, and I just I wondered too if if Max, I thought he was going to take another shot to take a shot at your hair. Um, well, here's the thing as well. And this, this is what I always say to the guys. If you lined up, there's no way in the world anyone picks me as the oldest guy on the team. But Luke and Phil definitely have a shot at that. Luke more so, I would say. But there's no way I look like the oldest guy. So I, I might, most people probably think I'm a freshman. Max is young at heart. That's, <laughs> that's what's most important. Small, He's young at heart. Um, okay, here we go. So, uh, if, if we were having a Royal Rumble with the UK football assistant, all the coaches, who's, who's winning the Royal Rumble between the UK football assistant coaches? Or no, all the coaches, not assistants. Come on. Because Mark Stoops is definitely in this Rumble. Luke, I hope you got the same as me. Oh, Max is ready to flip the paper. And we've got Buff. Frank Buffano. Frank yeah. Buffano's for sure up there. But does that mean Stoops wins? Like, did he well, get the that, team up? That's what I'm saying. So, Stoops wins by default, but Frank Buffano really wins because I think, uh, you know, if if anyone even tried to beat him, there'd be a few dead, uh, like, horse heads put in their bed and probably <laughs> <laughs> See, and I don't, I'm, I'm glad I asked that because he doesn't, uh, from a physical appearance, he doesn't have the same striking. I mean, he's no big dog. 
That's what makes him better. You just underestimate him. Yeah. You're like, oh, little guy. No, nope. bad mistake. Al Pacino, Al Pacino wasn't that big either. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, my final question of, of the evening in the roommate game. Uh, what's Mark Stoops' nickname? Ooh. I'll let you take this one, Max. I'm not off the team yet. I feel like I feel like it's dangerous water. We'll cut this part. We'll cut this part out. No, yeah. no, I don't. I don't know. I was gonna say he probably doesn't have a nickname. Luke. True or not true? <laughs> true. Uh, but I, I, Stoopsy, Stoopsy's a good one. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I, I've been. Uh, it's actually a running joke I have with my my radio partner because Vince. I forgot who he said he got, but apparently Vince will tell recruits that he's really trying to land. He'll tell him Stoops' nickname from when he was a kid and. That's not like a thing that Stoops wants to have as public knowledge. Um, so <laughs> we're trying to get it out there w- one day eventually. I, I don't think it's ever going to happen though. Um, it's worth a shot. I wasn't. I guess I wasn't highly recruited enough to to hear that nickname because yeah, I, eh, you know. I'm in the dark about that one. Maybe that's safe <laughs> for the, the four stars and five stars. Right, right. Save it for the big dogs. You know, you don't want to lose all that yeah. recruiting capital early. Um, yep. But. Guys, I do appreciate y'all hanging out with me and talking ball for a little bit. Uh, mostly just making jokes about hair, you know, God knows what. Um, please feel free to make all of the fat media jokes. I'm sure you all do that about us, talk about us all the time. Like, wh- who's that fat, dumb idiot? What's he saying again? I'm, I'm sure that's come up a time or two. It's okay. You guys no. have always been so nice to me, and Luke. I don't think we've ever really had to do that. I, I feel like there should be some more harsh criticisms of us and Maybe maybe you can write something about how all my and Luke failures during the time we were in Kentucky. That'd yeah, be instead of like instead of Luke missed that instead of Luke missed that block, the the bald old man missed the block. There we go. Yeah. Make it a little more personal. Yeah, yeah much more harsh. Uh, here's the trick: just switch position to quarterback, and everybody will hate you. So uh, <laughs> they'll they'll either love you or hate you. Uh, there's no in between. Um, but Luke, best. I mean, the good thing is you you ain't going anywhere. We're stuck with you for another year on that yep. offensive line uh, there's a schedule out that's exciting i'm sure you were pumped when you saw it uh and there's a lot of new changes happening so you get to be the kind of old man guiding light to, to make sure that everybody stays grounded throughout the change uh, but it, it's it's got to be a lot of fun knowing what's what's kind of coming down the pike absolutely i can't wait uh it's kind of weird because you have to kind of uh reprove to everyone that you you know, you work hard, you show up on time. Uh, not that I didn't do any of those things, but like, you know, Coach Slarman knew uh, what he was getting in me. And now it's kind of like, I feel like a freshman all over again. So it's kind of mm-hmm. a, a fun experience for sure. And, and Max, now the NFL drafts next. I hope you've been working on your bench press because that's all we're going to pay attention to. If you do. have you have you gotten the combine invite? Um, yeah, I have. I just. Um, well, there's no combine this year. It's just medical stuff. So ah, um, only, gotcha. only, only pro day kind of testing. Um, and unfortunately, um, you can break the exclusive that Max Duffy will not be participating in the bench press. Um, oh. this year. Um, due to them not having the time, um, because <laughs> obviously the reps would exceed well over 100. So they just wanted to, you know, we've got a short time frame and okay. people need to get home. So Right, I'm right, trying right. to, you know, cut back on that. Yeah, that that makes perfect sense. Let me let me break that. Breaking, Mac. Okay, I'll get I'll get that out there. Appreciate that exclusive. Um, but hey, be, best of luck in the draft process. I'm sure it's going to be weird. Um, but I also want you to know too that whenever you told us like your, uh, I guess it was your first year here, is like I'm not good enough to play in the NFL. People really did think that was funny. So I guess you do have a sense of humor after all. I mean, I still don't know if I am or not, but we'll soon see, won't we? We'll He's find not. out if people think I am good enough or not. It's, it's, He's uh, not. <laughs> it, it's an awesome, it's been an awesome experience and honestly one that I really cherish and I've loved the last three years. So it was, it was really cool to be a part of. I'm actually just really looking forward to these next couple of months. It's, uh, it's not a bad time in your life, honestly, to kind of be doing nothing but but training for a draft so whether it works out or not is kind of enjoying my time um you know training and and hanging out and spending my last few months maybe in lexington which is pretty cool so um yeah it's a it should be a cool little experience to see how it goes
Well, I, I, I hope the, the training goes well. I hope you find some some free afternoons to, to pick some ponies, get out to the track maybe, uh, maybe try out some local watering holes. Um, but I appreciate you all joining me. This has been great. And uh, uh, we'll, we'll be in touch. We'll be in touch. Well, just quickly before that as well, Coach Stoops um, has recently, you know, with his, you know, light wallet, um, decided to venture into distillery. Uh, well, not even distillery making, I was to say bourbon making i think and he's got his own bourbon out i'm yet to be given a bottle so coach now that you can give me a bottle um that would be great um, i'm calling you out on here and I, I can send you my address anytime you want it so that would be awesome good well and don't, I, don't send to luke, don't put luke on there though because we know you can't send to luke yet i know not to wait a whole another year messed up uh, I'll, I'll i'll happily share my address as well but uh guys this has been great uh and I don't know how to end this well. So thanks, I guess. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for everything. Yeah. And, and we'll be talking Thank soon. Thank you. No problem.